Hi everyone, my name is Hayes. Today is episode 9 of the Procreate Basics series and today we'll be learning all about actions. It's actually the last part of the actions tutorial in Procreate for this basic series. So in today's tutorial, we'll be learning all about sharing your artwork, timeless settings and preferences. So don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. We will begin by picking up from yesterday's tutorial and going into how to share your artwork now. The next tab that we want to talk about is share. So share, you can have a couple of options. If you share in Procreate, it will create the Procreate file and duplicate it with all your layers still intact. So if you want to back up your file, this is the great way to go. And PSD is actually a format for Photoshop. So if you share as PSD, you can actually import it in Photoshop and continue working on your artwork. And PDF is a document format and JPEG PNG TIFF is image format. Being the TIFF format is more towards printing. So if you're printing, you would want to save your file as a TIFF before you send it to the printer. Another option is you can actually share the layers separately. So if you share as PDF, all your layers will still be intact with in the PDF file as well as PNG files. So the PNG file is actually a little bit different from JPEG because PNG actually retains transparency. So if you look here, you can see that this layer itself only has this flower, like there's this flower right here. So if I turn off everything else, you can see that everything is transparent except for the flower and this is how they're going to export it. A transparent image of the flower itself minus the background so if you want to export layers and retain all the information within you can do that using png files as for animated gifs and pngs you can actually export your animation out that way if i tap on animated gif you can see the gif being previewed right here and you can set the settings here or if you want a video file, you can have animated mp4. This is actually a video file. So it depends what you're going to do with the file. If you're going to use it in your browser, your website. Like for me, I load it in a video, so I have it in mp4. But if you want to edit it in another video editor, you might want them in separate PNG files for more control. And if you tap on the video tab, tap on time lapse replay, you can see that there's a blue bar here. This actually shows the entire video length of the time lapse and if I slide my finger on the screen, it will actually speed up or go back in time depending on how you want to look at your picture and then after that you can just press done when you're done looking at it then here you get to check your time lapse recording if you uncheck it it won't actually keep your time lapse so you see it's asking me if I want to delete my time lapse so I'm not going to delete my time lapse and then now there's an option to export your time-lapse video so you can export it and share it on YouTube or share on Instagram or any social media that you like. The next tab is actually the preference tab where you can set certain things for Procreate like you can set a light interface for your Procreate where it turns brighter or you can check it to get your color picker and your brush picker all to the right side you can uncheck it and keep it on the left side if you want and then this brush cursor thing is very useful if you are doing like a recording so let's say i'm painting something can you see that that's actually like a circle on my cursor itself and it actually only shows up if you check this brush cursor if you uncheck it you don't see that anymore so the reason why i turn it on is some people who comment in my youtube channel saying that they can't see where my cursor is so i turn this on so that it's visible and people can see where i'm drawing even though i'm recording my video so if you tap on project canvas you can actually connect to another airplay device that is compatible and you can actually project your current screen onto the other device itself so this connect third-party stylus only works if you're not using the Apple Pencil. So if you're not using the Apple Pencil, you can have the options of using these other styluses and connect them to your iPad as you're working on Procreate. And then edit pressure curve, this is actually to decide how your pressure is going to respond to your Apple Pencil. And if I adjust it like this, it's going to be a lot more sensitive even though I'm not pressing very very hard. But if you go the other way, it's going to be less responsive. You see it's like creating such a light touch even though I'm pressing really really hard now. 
So that's how it works. So if you want to reset it, just tap on reset. Usually I don't play with all these settings. I feel that it's really good already. Then gesture controls is where you can like totally like customize your Procreate, right? Where you can customize the modifier tools and quick shape and what can you do with your fingers? What can you do with your Apple Pencil? It's pretty straightforward. You can just explore them as you go, but I don't recommend making a lot of changes here because once a new update comes out for Procreate, it can be quite confusing when new features and functions roll out next time. So I tend to not mess with anything in the gestures control for procreate so rapid undo delay is about how it responds when you have the two finger tap and the redo tap by using three fingers so if i hold the two fingers it will actually undo really really quickly so you can control the speed of how fast it undoes using that setting so now i've turned on the setting to the maximum and if i undo it's gonna take a very very long time it takes like quite a while for you to see the undo happening because it's like trying to confirm are you really gonna undo? Are you really gonna undo? Selection mask visibility is when you use your selection mask. So let's say I'm selecting here. So this is my selection mask. If I zoom in close, you can see these lines. So these are the unselected areas and where you don't have all the zigzag lines is where you selected the area. So if you turn this all the way up you can see clearly now this is selected this is unselected that's how it's supposed to be so you can set how visible you want that to be or completely not visible at all okay guys thank you so much for watching in tomorrow's tutorial however we will be learning all about color picker and palettes it's a very exciting tutorial remember to stay tuned and catch tomorrow's tutorial don't forget to comment like and subscribe Bye!